Hello. Okay, it's happened. We're in business. <laughs> How's this? I like it, Alex. <laughs> Do you always keep instruments near your bed in case inspiration strikes? Um, well, I have a piano near me all the time. Um, and I always have a good... Yeah, the answer is yes. I've never really been able to fully explain songwriting other than it's like this little like glittery cloud floats in front of your face and you you grab it at the right time and then you revert back to what you know about the structure of a song in order to fill in the, the gaps. Where were you the moment inspiration struck? It was, I was in bed. I was in Nashville. I got out of bed. I think it was really late at night and like stumbled over to the piano Okay, so I have this idea that's like, obviously I don't know the verse, whatever yet, but I have a pretty cool, really simple, beautiful chorus idea called Lover. I've been thinking for years, God, it would just be so great to have like a song that, that people who are in love would want to dance to, like slow dance to. In my head, I had like just the, these, the last two people on a dance floor at 3 a.m. swaying. What did you have in your mind? Was it the title? Was it a lyric? Was it a melody? It was not. Um, it was. It was. Can I go where you go? Can we always be this close? Can I go where you go? Can we always be this close forever and ever? I wanted the chorus to be these like really simple existential questions that we ask ourselves when we're in love. Can I go where you go? Is such a heavy thing to ask somebody. Um, can, can we always be this close? Has so much fear in it. Um, but so does love. When did you hit upon the word lover? Oh, um, I've always liked that word, but I've never used it in like, in everyday life, you know, when people are like, that's my lover over there or calling each other a lover. Like I've never done that, but I've always loved it in the context of poetry or songs. It's a polarizing word. Like some people are like, Oh, that word like gives me the creeps. <laughs> um, well, anything I do is polarizing. So, you know, <laughs> Fair I'm enough. Used to that. So how much of the song did you get done that night at the piano in Nashville? The whole thing. She sent me that voice note, whether it's a whole song or just a, a little thing from her, I'm always, I sort of get this big jolt and I listen and I block out the whole world for a minute. Every lyric and melody was right there. And I was like, get on a plane. She came in the next day, she sat right there. She played it. It's basically, no, I don't see it as piano. I think it's that like kind of guitar dreamy, guitar yeah. throwback, but not like camp throwback. I know what you mean. So. I thought it was uh, the perfect song. Which is, which is really um, interesting because it's almost like uh, even more of a, more of a duty to, to do it right. Yeah, I love the walk down. I love the walk down. I was trying to figure out like what the hell is going to happen there. So the... so. When I'm working with Jack and Taylor, I'm working with two extremely creative people who are bouncing ideas back and forth so fast. So my job is to basically not slow them down in any way. Laura's been by my side for every record I've made uh, pretty much since people started listening to any of my records. We're all three of us are just in that process together. We're just like, oh, like it's just fun. We're fully, fully acting on impulse and we're acting on like intuition and we're acting on like excitement and like oat milk lattes. I remember the first thing I did was I went into the live room, which is right there. And at that time, I had listened to a lot of like violent femmes recently. And I was just excited about how much feeling you could get out of a snare drum if it was a brush. And I just remember going in and just going, <laughs> one brush. I wasn't even really playing drums. I just kind of had one brush. It was just. We were using like real reverbs and, and real tape echoes. It gives like a really special character to it. 
where it does feel nostalgic. The bass, which is a very, very, very special bass, belongs to the studio. He was calling that the Paul bass. Is that Paul McCartney? Yeah. My old Hofner bass, my little baby. Come on, baby. We were just referencing, like, what would Paul do? WWPD. The bass line is actually the hook. It's not a true Paul bass, though. It's not a true Paul bass at all, but it's better at that Paul thump than I've ever gotten out of the violin bass. The bass and the drum is sort of like, if you just hear those two tracks, like the entire space is so, I think, beautifully filled. In the studio, I'm like obsessively going over, over every lyric and making sure that's what I want the final lyric to be. So I'll be over like, just do it like in my notes, just like sharpen that, hone in on that, you know. Were there lines that changed in that process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had toyed with the idea of being like, we could leave the Christmas lights up till April. We could leave the Christmas lights up till January. Doesn't everyone leave their Christmas lights up till January? But like, it's not about like that being a crazy thing. It's about how mundane it is. It's about like, we could put a rug over there. We could do wallpaper or we could do paint. This is our place. We made the rules. When young adults go from living in their family to then combining their life with someone else. That's actually like the most profound thing. She was just like telling this story. I don't know, it almost feels like an old story I've heard many times. I mean, I guess it is, like people falling in love. Tell me about the importance of the bridge to you. I feel like you you love a bridge. This is a special bridge. Talk I to me about it. I love a bridge. It. I love a bridge so much. I love like trying to take the song to a, a higher level with the bridge. There's these sort of pan plucking strings and these kind of flutes that are popping out. I wanted it to be, you know, the first time we introduced the idea of like vows. Make it feel like a little wedding. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand? I love to take a common phrase and twist it. So the bridge, I took all these um, common phrases that we say about weddings. With every guitar string scar on my head. I like to add something that changes the phrase. I take this magnetic force of a man to be my lover. Without a bridge, a song can sort of feel like almost like a jingle. You know when you're like driving through beautiful scenery, you're like mountains, trees, oh my god, right? And then all of a sudden you go through a tunnel and you're like, what the f-? And then it's back, mountains and trees, so beautiful. It's like you need that third element to take you away from where you've been. So you're so excited to get it back. Specifically in Lover, when you come out of the bridge and you go back into the chorus, it just... And it was all done in that one day? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think we were were all really excited when we left the studio that day. Even if anybody had been like, I don't think this one's great, I would have been like, well... I reject your feedback because I love this one. <laughs> it's it's just a it's a perfect song with and it tells that story perfectly and pulls me right into where she wants me as a listener to be. You're my, you're my, you're my, you're my, you're my what? And then lover. Do you have guitar string scars on your hands? Well, I mean, I have like extreme calluses. You can't see them probably, but they're all it's. And, you know, I have some from, like, just changing strings and not being very good at it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, some where, like, you know, you don't, you're, like, tuning, 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 pop, ow. I got the horses in the back. The debt I owe, gotta sell my soul. I can't say no, no, I can't say no. Mine, what's the deal? Mine, I'm coming through. It's your girl, this old. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.